Hello students, uh, today's topic is samples, inspection samples and interpretation of data, container evaluation and objectives under this topic are how to collect the food samples, principles and characteristics of food samples, inspection of samples and interpretation of data, container evaluation in detail we are going to learn. Quality is the ultimate criterion of the desirability of any food product. Food quality can be done by sensory and objective methods. First, we have to know about the sensory evaluation. When the quality of a food product is assessed by means of human sensory organs, these said to be sensory or subjective or organoleptic. Every time food is eaten, a judgment is done. Sensory quality is a combination of different senses of perception coming into play in and eating a food. Appearance, flavor and mouthfeel decide the acceptance of the food. The basic principles that must be addressed in sampling are as follows. First one, the sample should represent the food as sold to the consumer and each part of the divided sample should be truly representative of the original. Where divided, all parts of the sample must individually be representative of the food and of each other. The sampling process must not alter the sample in any way that might affect the analysis. Storage and transportation of the sample must not alter it in any significant way. Whether through contamination, loss, deterioration or other means. Under sensory characteristics of food, appearance, color, flavor, order, these are all will be included. So first we will deal with the appearance. Surface characteristics of food products contribute to the appearance. Scrambled egg with a very dry surface is not at all acceptable. Fudge with a glossy surface is rated high. Interior appearance can also be evaluated. Lumps in a pudding or gravy which are not can be judged by eye. Sight plays a role in the assessment of the lightness of foods like bread, cakes and idlis. Transparency, opaqueness, turbidity, dullness and gloss is mediated by the organs of sight. Quality of fish can be ascertained by the brightness of the eyes of the fish. Quality of sweet limes can be found out by the appearance. If the skin is thin, it is juicy. Infestation with insects can be found out in brinjal by the appearance of black spots on it. Completeness of cooking can be judged by the appearance in products like meat and rice. Now we will see about the color. In addition to the giving pleasure, the color of food is associated with other attributes. Ripeness of fruits like banana, tomato, mango, gova, papaya and plum can be assessed by the color. Color is used and indexed to the quality of a number of foods. The strength of coffee and tea is judged in part by the color of the beverages. The color of roast beef is used and indexed to doneness. Toast, dosa, and chapati which are too brown are likely to be rejected in anticipation of scorched bitter taste. Now flavor. The flavor of food has three components order, taste and composite of sensations known as mouth feel. Order. A substance which produces order must be volatile and the molecules of the substance must come in contact with receptors in the epithelium of the olfactory organ. Aroma is able to penetrate even beyond the visual range when comparatively volatile compounds abundant as is true in boiling samba. The volatility of aromas is related to the temperature of the food. High temperatures tend to volatize aromatic compounds making them quite apparent for judging. Cool or cold temperatures inhibit volatilization. Taste. We value food for its 
taste. Taste sensation which the taste buds register are categorized as sweet, salt, sour or bitter. Taste buds near the tip of the tongue are more sensitive to sweet and salt. Those on the sides to sour and those near the back are to bitter. The sensation known as sour is associated with hydrogen ions supplied by acids like vinegar and by those found in fruits and vegetables. Salt taste is due to ions of salt. Sodium chloride is said to be the only one with pure salt sensation. Substances which elicit the sweet sensation are primarily organic compounds like alcohols, certain amino acids and aldehydes. Glycerols taste mildly sweet. Sugars are the main source of sweetness in food. Not all sugars are equally sweet. Fructose gives the most intense sweet sensation followed by sucrose, glucose, maltose, galactose and lactose. Sweetness appears to be associated with the hydroxyl radicals on the sugar molecules. The concentration required for identification is known as threshold for that particular substance. Individuals differ in their sensitivity to the four taste sensations and the threshold for each of primary taste is usually not at the same level in any one of individual. The pleasant sensations in eating come from more order than the taste. Taste interaction. Food contains mixture of substances which elicit all four taste sensations. Salt in sub-threshold concentration reduces the tartness of acid. Some threshold concentrations of salt also increase the apparent sweetness of sucrose. The addition of salt to lime juice, sherbet, lassi and to fruits like apple or guava improve the taste. Conversely, acids in sub-threshold concentration intensify the saltiness of sodium chloride so it is to over salt tart foods. Sugar in sub-threshold concentration reduces the saltiness of sodium chloride so a pinch of sugar may improve vegetable soup that has been over salted. Sugar also reduces the soreness of acids and bitterness of coffee. Temperature, hot and cold sensations contribute to composite flavor of a food like coffee, soup or ice cream. Taste sensations are less intense as the temperature of food is lowered below 20 degrees centigrade and raised above 30 degrees centigrade. Thus, really hot coffee is not so bitter as that which has cooled in the cup. Iced coffee is not so bitter as that which is warm but not really hot. Melted ice cream tastes unpleasantly sweet although in the frozen state it is acceptable. Texture In ice cream depends upon the size of the crystals. How they feel on the tongue is characterized as coarse or fine. Coarse texture crystalline products are said to be grainy. The Brittleness of food is another aspect of texture. Tissues in a raw vegetable and fruit are brink or crunchy. The cells offer moderate resistance fraction by the pressure of the teeth. Example, crispiness of apple and raw carrots. Tenderness in fruits and vegetables depends on how easily the cell separate. In meats, ease separation of the lean without fat, tissue determines the tenderness. Tenderness in pastry is assessed by the ease with which the crisp crust breaks. Ice cream may be too hard or too soft which can be found out by mouthfeel. Gravies, sauces, syrups range in consistency from thick to thin. Temperature may affect the consistency of food. Example, ghee, butter, cheese and ice creams. The consistency of soft, 
custard besides being thick or thin may be smooth or curdled gels may be rubbery or fragile that is easily breakable particles of cooked cereal can be pasty or separate in grains astringency it is dry puckery sensation believed to be due to precipitation of the proteins in saliva and in the mucous membrane lining of the mouth which deprives them their lubricating character and astringent substances may also constrict the ducts leading from the salivary glands to mouth unripe fruits like cashew fruit wood apple blueberry and gooseberry are astringent psychological factors in addition to color order taste and mouth feel certain psychological factors contribute to acceptability of foods food is accepted when there is pleasant association now we will see about the sensory test these tests are well integrated with overall plan of development of the product reasons for testing food quality to know the consumer preference this helps the producer to discover which qualities of the need to be developed and emphasized he should obtain the cross section of all potential consumers consumer preference panels may consist of several hundred persons and the products are tested ordinarily conditions of use the results are considered to represent the taste of the significant the population and are used to predict market outlook for a product effect of variation in processing on quality tests are done to investigate the influence of production they should have the ability to distinguish among degrees of difference in flavor the members of this type of panel are not required to be expert tasters of the product under investigation their highly developed ability to identify different taste in similar products is the key quality required its purpose is to determine whether a given variation in processing has altered the quality or flavor of the products it is also used to test the effects of storage and packaging on two originally alike but subjected to different storage environment to detect the presence of off quality here the panel members are usually trained to recognize and to evaluate the standard flavors of food so that they can use their powers and discrimination consistently example rancidity in fats and butter now we will see the food sample evaluation mainly we need testing laboratory so what all should be required under r it should be consists of five separate units reception room where the panel members meet the person in charge of the laboratory and get acquainted with the type of the samples to be tested the sample preparation room which is clean and well equipped for the preparation and see to that of the sample the test booths are where the actual sensory evaluation of the samples are carried out by panel members the entire testing laboratory should be air conditioned free from noise and extraneous odor whenever samples with difference in colors are tested color light should be used to mask of the color of the samples stainless steel glass and dishes cups and plain serving china are the most convenient utensils now we will see about the preparation of the samples samples for presentation must be from homogeneous allot careful sampling of the food is necessary for sensory evaluation samples to be tested should be prepared by identical methods 
all samples should be at the same temperature optimum level and kept constant during the test stainless steel forks and spoons can be used for the tasting the samples samples are presented with 3 to 5 digit code markings to obscure the identity of the samples the order of presentation should also be randomized within each test session testing time testing should be done at a time when the panel members are fresh the test time is generally in between 10 to 12 in the morning too many samples should not be given as they may produce fatigue and lead to errors in the results that it is not more than four to five samples at a time design of the experiment experimental error can be minimized through the use of techniques of randomizing a statistical design is used in order to measure variables separately and together and to establish the significance of results the experiment should be designed on the basis of the accuracy needed and the amount of sample available inspection of samples and interpretation of data now under this we will see about the techniques of smelling and tasting for order test of food products a special technique is used to perceive the aroma more clearly smelling is done with short rapid sequence of sniffs tasting of coffee or tea or fruit juice is done by slurping one teaspoon of the liquid is rolled on the tongue so that the liquid reaches all parts of the tongue where the taste buds are located now we will see the types of test the tests are grouped into four types difference test rating test sensitivity test descriptive test the selection of a particular test method will depend on the defined objective of the test accuracy desired and panel personnel available for conducting the evaluation as i told you the four different tests first one is difference test difference testing is used to determine if foods differ in certain aspects some of these aspects include but are not limited to order taste and texture the sensory lab employs three different types of difference tests the triangle test the duo trio test and the paired comparison test first we will see about the pair comparison test the panel members receive several pairs of samples these may be different or the same samples in each pair samples are always given in code numbers different samples are given in each pair which differ in the intensity of one characteristic example sweetness bitterness or rancidity in each pair the sample with more or less intense taste will have to be picked out i will show you one example of specimen evaluation card here you can see the name date product you are given one or several sample pairs evaluate the two samples in the pair for which you have to see the difference is there any difference the two samples in the pair that is they will be given code number of pairs and you have to write the yes no and with along with the signature next we will see about the duo trio test this test employs three samples two identical and one different the panel is first given one of the pair of the identical samples as known reference sample r and the other two successively in random order and asked to match one of these with the first one a positive answer is required even if it is a guess the chance probability of placing the samples in a certain order is one half now we will see about the triangle test this test employs three samples two identical and one different presented simultaneously to the panel 
the judge is asked to determine which of these three is the odd sample is. A positive answer is required even if it is a guess. Since all three samples are unknown, the chance probability of placing the sample in a certain order is one third. Two samples that is A and B can be presented in combinations A, A, B and B, B, A and for replication in six different arrangements. Those are A, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, B, B and B, B, A. So now we will see the rating test. These tests give more quantitative data than difference tests and can be used for the analysis of more than two samples at the same time. Now ranking test. This test is used to determine how several samples differ on the basis of a single characteristic. A control is not needed to be identified. Panelists are presented all samples simultaneously that is including a standard or control if used with code numbers and are asked to rank all samples according to the intensity of the specified characteristic. In consumer analysis, the panelists are asked to rank the code samples according to their preference. Now single sample or monodic test. This test is useful for testing foods that have an altered taste or flavor carry over which precludes testing a second sample at the same session. The panelist is asked to indicate the presence or absence and or intensity of a particular quality characteristic. With trained panelists, the completed analysis of two or more samples evaluated at different times can be compared. Also in market and consumer analysis, the results of different samples evaluated at different times by a different set of untrained panelists can be compared. Now two sample difference test. This test is a variation of the paid comparison test and measures the amount of difference. Each Taster is served four pairs of sample. Each pair consists of an identified difference and coded test sample. In two pairs, the test sample is a duplicate of the reference sample. In the other two pairs, the test sample is the test variable. The panelist is asked to judge each pair independently as to the degree of difference between the test sample and standard on a scale of 0, representing no difference to 3, representing extreme difference. Additional questions on direction of difference can also be asked. The panelist is not to guess and he is panelized for guessing through the coded duplicate standards in two pairs. Now see about the multiple sample difference test. In this test, more than one test variable can be evaluated per session, but with reduced reliability. Each panelist is served three to six samples depending upon the number of test variables. One sample is a known standard. The panelist compares each coded sample with the known standard. One coded sample is a duplicate of the standard. Whatever score the panelist assigns to the blind standard is subtracted from the score he assigns to the test variables. The panelist is not to be guess. Direction and degree of difference is also to be judged. Now hedonic rating test. It relates to the pleasurable or unpleasurable experiences. The hedonic rating test is used to measure the consumer acceptability of food products. From one to four samples are served to the panelist at one session. He is asked to rate the acceptability of the product on a scale 
usually of nine points ranging from likely, extremely or dislike extremely. Scales with different ranges and other experience phrases could also be used. The results are analyzed for preference with data from large untrained panels. Numerical scoring test. One or more samples are presented to each panelist in random order or according to a statistical design. The panelist evaluates each sample on a specific scale for a particular characteristic indicating the rating of the samples. The panelists are trained to follow the sensory characteristics corresponding to the agreed quality descriptions and scores. Without this, understanding the rating will not be of any use. Composite scoring test. The rating scale is defined so that specific characteristic of a product are rated separately. The definition of the rating scale is weighed so that the most important characteristics will account for a large part of the total score. The resulting scores are compounded for any one panelist to arrive at a composite score. This method is helpful in grading products and comparison of quality attributes by indicating which characteristic is at fault in a poor product. It gives more information than the straight numerical method. The panelists are trained to evaluate the dimensions of the individual quality characteristics equally and in the use of weight scale. So now we will see about the sensitivity test. It is done to assess the ability of individual to detect different taste, order and feel the presence of specific factors like astringency or hotness like pepper. These tests are used select and train panel members for evaluating the quality of products containing spices, salt and sugar. Example is tomato ketchup or sauce. Sensitivity threshold test. Sensitivity test to measure the ability of an individual to smell, taste or feel specific characteristic in food or beverages or pure substances are used frequently in selecting for evaluations in product research and development. Also they are used to establish intensity of sensory response of a food or food components. Now we will see about the dilution test. Dilution tests are designated to establish the smallest amount of an unknown material developed as a substitute for a standard product that can be detected when it is mixed with the standard product. Example, margarine in butter, dried whole milk in fresh milk, synthetic orange flavor ingredients with natural flavor and so on. The quality of the test material is represented by a dilution number which is the percent of the test material in the mixture of the standard product such that there exists a just identifiable difference in order and taste between them. Descriptive flavor profile method. This is both qualitative and quantitative description method for flavor analysis in products containing different tastes and order. Example, tomato ketchup the flavor profile analysis is given. Now the last one is container evaluation. A container is a basic tool consisting of any device creating a partially or fully enclosed space that can used to contain, store and transport objects or materials. In commerce, it includes any receptacle or enclosure for holding a product used in packaging and shipping. Things kept inside of a container are protected by being inside of its structure. The term is most frequently applied to devices made from materials that are 
durable and at least partly rigid. Modern characteristics. The product characteristics that create utility for a container go beyond just providing shock and moisture protection for the contents. A well designed container will also exhibit ease of use that is it is easy for the worker to open or close to insert or the extract the contents and to handle the container in shipment. A good container will have convenient and eligible labeling locations, a shape that is conducive to efficient stacking and storing and easy recycling at the end of its useful life. Now you can see the variety of containers. Examples are over here, ceramic cylindrical vessels including amorphous made of clay, bottles similar to a jar in being traditionally symmetrical about the axis perpendicular to its base and made of glass. Jars traditionally cylindrical and made of glass. Barrels made of wooden staffs bound by rope, wooden or metal hoops. Cans traditionally cylindrical and sheet metallic. Drums similar to a can but definitely cylindrical and not necessarily metallic. Boxes creates a box or rectilinear exoskeleton designed for hosting or loading. Wooden boxes, lift vans, shipping containers including corrugated boxes made of corrugated, fiber boarded, intermediate bulk containers, flexible intermediate bulk containers. And hence food sampling gives a good results for adulteration crosses the economic fraud area when toxic or inedible adulterants are used and human illness and chemical poisoning result. Thank you.